the standard normal distribution, also known as the Z distribution. So the Z distribution is used when we have continuous data that is symmetrical in the way it is distributed. So when we're thinking about our normal distribution, think of our bell-shaped curve, as you may have seen before. So first, the way we find area here is just like we discussed in the CDF and PDF, and the uniform distribution is area is found um, using um, a region of values that we're looking for. So first thing first, let's point out a few key details. If we look at this distribution and we imagine that the tails expand to infinity on either side of the distribution, there's a few things that we want to uh, get comfortable with. First, if I took this distribution and cut it into exactly half, right, put a line right in the middle, what I know is that the area on the right side of the distribution is equal to 0.5 or we can write it as 50%. The same thing applies for the left side of the distribution. We know that the total area on the left side of the distribution is also equal to 0.5 or 50%. So basically, if we imagine this distribution with the mean in the center, the mean being zero standard deviations away from the mean, what we know is if we were interested in finding something, uh, a question, an answer to a question like this, what is the probability that a value, a random continuous variable in this distribution, is greater than or equal to the mean okay, of the distribution? So basically, if we look at the distribution, here's the mean of the distribution. And if we're looking for an area greater than the mean, well, that's the 50% or 0.5 area greater than the mean. Now, for all other different values, we're going to start looking at what's called the Z distribution. Let's have a look at the Z table. This is the Z table that is assigned to you in the textbook. With the Z table, you'll notice a few things. Now, be careful. Don't Google Z table. Okay, use the one in the textbook and or the one I will upload into Brightspace in this section. You should see it attached in this specific module. Now the reason is that the Z table can be read different ways and sometimes it's organized in slightly different ways. The Z table that we're going to be using for this class is shown this way. It gives us the areas as such. If I have a normal distribution, here's our mean of that distribution, okay? The Z table here in the textbook gives us an area between the mean and some Z value. So let's say, we'll say this is some positive Z value. So the table is always showing you an area between some Z or some standard deviation greater than or less than the mean. Okay, and you'll see, in fact, if we look at the picture here of this distribution, you'll notice right at the top, there's a picture showing you exactly what I described. So you'll see that the Z table is showing you area between zero and some Z value. Okay, so let's do a few examples and we'll work through a few uh, different renditions of reading this distribution. Here are a few examples we'll work through. Let's start with example uh, A, we'll call this. Here we're looking to find the area between 0 and 1.2. So we're looking for that blue shaded region. Now this is basically asking us this question. What is the probability of randomly selecting an object that is between 0 standard deviations from the mean and 1.2 standard deviations from the mean? So what do we do there? Well, first we've observed this number, the 1.2. So now we go to our Z table. And here on the Z table, what we'll notice is a few things. First, you'll have this column with the Z values. And the Z values are going to be the first two digits. So basically, if we look at a Z value of, of 1.0, that's basically telling us that we're looking for the area between zero standard deviations from the mean and one standard deviation from the mean. If we go to Z of 2, that's basically telling you the area between zero standard deviations from the mean and two standard deviations from the mean.
In this specific example, we're looking for 1.2 standard deviations. So in that case, here we have 1.2, which is shown right there. And with that case, we'll see 1.2, and it'll give us this area here, which is 0.3849. So in any distribution that is normally distributed, the area between 0 and 1.2 standard deviations from the mean is 0.3849 or 38.49. Another way we can think of this is this way. The probability of randomly selecting a continuous variable uh, that is between 0 and 1.2 standard deviations from the mean is 38.49%. Let's look at number, uh, let's look at part B. So part B is interested in finding the area between 0 and negative 2.25 standard deviations from the mean. So let's first look for 2.25. So first, let's look for 2.2. So 2.2 is right here. That's 2.2 standard deviations from the mean. Now we're looking for the 0 0.5, 0 0.05. So that will be here, right? This upper first row is going to give us the hundredths place of our z-score. So the area there is basically 2.25 or 0.4878. So the area between 0 and negative 2.25 is 0.4878 or 48.78%. Notice something I did, right? Notice this was a negative here. Negative and positive doesn't matter in this case because we're looking at area, right? The air, area itself can't be negative. Area is always positive. Z is just movement away from the center. Okay, we'll, we'll illustrate an example of this in class. But basically, if we are looking at taking steps, let's say we're on a number line. And we start here at point zero. If you take two steps in this direction, one, two, right, you took two steps. That, that's, that's the distance traveled. Now, if you travel the same size two steps to the left, you still travel two steps, right? It doesn't matter which direction you went, the amount of travel was the same. And you can think of this as exactly the same as the area when we're thinking about our normal distribution. Okay, let's do a few other examples. So let's look at example C looking for the area between negative 0.05 and 1.5 standard deviations from the mean. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little dotted line here at zero because we're going to need to calculate two areas here. First, let's start with this area between zero and 0.5. So this little red shaded uh, region. So let's go here to 0.5, right? We can see that that area is equal to 0.1915. So this area is 0.1915. Now for the area between 0 and 1.5, so this area here. Now for that, we're going to go to 1.5 here on our Z table. So here's 1.5. Okay, and this tells us that the area is 0.4332. So this is 0.4332. So now what is the total area between negative 0.5 and positive 1.5 standard deviations from the mean? Why we simply just add the two components and we get 0.6247. Okay, so the probability of randomly selecting a continuous variable between negative 0.05 and 1.5 standard deviations of the mean is going to be 62.47%. Okay, let's do our last example here. In this case, we're looking for the area greater than two standard deviations from the mean. Okay, so we're looking for the area greater than two standard deviations from the mean. Notice how small this region is, right? Notice it's gonna be a small region. So first thing we're gonna do is we have to do this in two parts. The first thing we need to find is what is the area between zero and two standard deviations from the mean? So let's find that first. So here is two standard deviations from the mean, and that area is 0.4772 almost 50%, right? So here is 0.4772. So in order for us to find out what's here in the tail of this distribution, well, what do we know from before? We know that the entire area on the right side of the distribution of the mean 
is exactly equal to 0.5. It's half the data. So the total area is 0.5, and the area between 0 and 2 standard deviations is 0.4772. Then that means the area greater than 2 must be 0.5 minus 0.4772, which equals 0 0.0228.